My name is Daver, and in this video, I'm gonna try something new. I'm gonna take logs from a downed tree and try to turn them into usable lumber. Stick around, this is Daver Made. What rolls from stairs, from owner and pairs, rolls over your neighbor's dog. What's great for a snack and fits on your back, it's log, log, log. It's log, log, it's big, it's heavy, it's wood. It's log, log, it's better than bad, it's good. So long story long, a tree in my neighbor's yard fell into a tree in my yard and got tangled up all the way at the top and it required the work of a tree service to take it down because there was no way in hell I was going all the way up there. When they took the tree down, I asked that they leave as many logs as they could. I thought it would be really cool to try to make something out of the lumber from the tree and give it another life. Now this tree was an old dead ash tree that had fallen into my tree. I believe the tree was a beetle killed ash. I don't know the name of the beetle. Now I wanna give a disclaimer before I start the video. I'm not an expert, I've never done this before, and I'm certainly no Mac Cremona when it comes to milling up logs. Um, I did my best to cut the logs up into manageable pieces to bring into my shop. There are some other methods and things like that that I probably didn't follow uh, as one should. All of that said, viewer discretion advised. Don't follow any of the things that I'm doing in this video because I have no idea what I'm doing. But I hope you get some ideas out of it and I hope you enjoy watching. Let's get into it. So I cut up the rest of the tree into more manageable pieces and then sealed the ends with latex paint. Now I'm using my Rikon 14 inch bandsaw and it's the model 10-326 to mill up these logs and I'm using the resaw fence. Now I thought that these logs were at a good shape where they wouldn't really move too much around on me so I decided to just kind of freehand cut them on the bandsaw without using any kind of jigs or anything like that. Now I will say after doing this, uh, I highly recommend using a jig. Now I just wanted to kind of confirm what type of wood I was dealing with. I was pretty sure it was ash, but cutting off the first piece confirmed that's indeed what it was. Now after cutting off that first piece, it left me with a somewhat flat bottom that I could use to kind of square up this log. And you'll see here that I am getting a little bit of resistance from the log and I stalled out my bandsaw a couple times here, but for the most part, it did a really good job cutting through this log. I'm also using the stock blade that came with the bandsaw because I know that it's at the end of its life and I didn't really care about ruining it. So I figured, hey, this might be the last hurrah for the bandsaw blade that came with my Rikon bandsaw and uh, why not go out with uh, a difficult job for it. Now it goes without saying, but I do wanna mention that I did debark this log and I will the next log as well before milling it up. Now what I'm trying to do is kind of mill it into somewhat of a square shape and I screwed up as you can see on the top here it is so wonky and that is because when I was pushing the log through it started rolling on me and the blade started wandering and that's probably not the safest thing to do and again why a jig probably is the better route to go. Now another thing is that when I'm cutting this log up there's a lot of tension in there and also these logs are super wet. There is a lot of moisture trapped within these logs and as you'll see here you'll be able to notice the wetter layers as I use my jointer and there's a good example right there those two little spots that is moisture and you could really feel how wet this log was. What I'm trying to achieve here is a dead flat side of this log or cant, I believe is what you would call it, if you can consider it that, to run against the fence on the bandsaw so I can get straighter pieces. Now I did make a mistake here and maybe got a little bit impatient. I should have done this on two sides, not just one side. Uh, that would probably give me uh, better boards in the end. But hey, this was my first time and I was uh, really excited to see what I could get out of this. Now that I have somewhat of a square cant, not really, but close enough, I measured out about an inch and a half or six quarter pieces. 
and I thought that would be good enough to count for any waste that I would need to mill these up to actual square boards. So I cut these down just wide enough to give me some usable boards. Now this first log that I milled up, I was very happy with the results, but I was more excited about the next log which had some spalting on it. Now, similar to the first log, this one had a nice flat bottom and I wanted to try to saw this up some different ways. So here is an illustration of the different ways that you can mill up logs. And I'm not gonna get into the details on why and when you would do it, but I thought I'd give it a shot. Spoiler alert, didn't work out as well as I wanted it to. Again, I should have used the jig. Um, as you can see here, the log was turning and the blade was wandering and I got some really bad cuts at first. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't getting nervous at this point because I thought there was some really cool spalting and figuring in this log and I really wanted to at least get a few pieces out of it. Now here's the cutoff piece which shows that spalted wood and it looks great but I definitely was getting in too deep at this point and probably should have took a moment. So I decided to cut this log down the center or as close to center as I could and I did not get a really good straight cut, which just made more work for me and potentially lost some volume of wood that would be, uh, you know, I wish I would have had it, I guess. Um, I'm just kind of creating some waste at this point. So don't do what I did. Now, after cutting the log into two pieces, I started ripping down the side and I was gonna get some smaller pieces and I was okay with that because I was gonna make jewelry or try to carve some spoons or something like that out of these and I didn't really need massive pieces. But on the other half, uh, I did wanna try to get some bigger pieces that I could use for boxes or other larger items. And again, with this log, I'm trying to rip the pieces at about an inch and a half or so. And just like the other long, I took it to the jointer to square up one side. Again, should have done two sides. But as you can see here, that spalting looks marvelous. Now I was feeling a little bit better at this point, and while not perfectly uh, square on both sides, as you can see, uh, I was still able to rip up some really nice spalted pieces that I will be able to use in the future. And here's a close-up of some of those spalted pieces, and I'm really looking forward to using this. Now, based on the thickness of these pieces, it's going to be about a year and a half before I can use these and they fully dry out. And I uh, stack these up with some spacers in between in my shop so I can get some airflow. Um, but I'm excited to see what the rest of the tree will bring me. This is only a couple logs, and I still have way more that I can cut up. There you have it. I hope you got something out of this video. If anything, it was just entertaining to see what these somewhat rotten looking logs could yield in terms of lumber. I thought I got a pretty good amount out of it and hey, it was free lumber besides the cost for taking down the tree, which yes, I did cover. I'm a good neighbor. Anyways, I appreciate your support. I appreciate you watching and until next time, take care.